I just love it. I'm so happy with it. I will reread it a million times over and over. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Isa, and I am a queer disabled writer and advocate and an avid reader. I love queer rep, I love disability rep, and when those two things combine, I literally cannot shut up about it. And my friends are tired of hearing me talk about it, so you get to hear me talk about it in honor of Pride Month. <laughs> Here are my top recommendations for queer disability rep in fiction, mostly fantasy, and a couple of um, nonfiction. So the first book that I want to talk about is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo, which is one of my favorite book duologies of all time. Both books I highly recommend. The second book is my favorite. Um, but what you need to know about Six of Crows is, first off, it is a little bit of an older YA heist story. It's fantasy. Um, the plot is very heisty. The romance plays a role, but it's not, it is not a romance book. Um, for the queer rep, we really don't see the like main canon relationship happening until book two, but the relationship dynamics between all of the characters is absolutely fantastic. Three of the six characters are canonically queer. One of the characters we get to explore their um, sexuality a little bit more in the following duology, which you have to read the initial um, Shadow and Bone series. So if you have read Shadow and Bone, if you saw it on Netflix, this is Six of Crows, which is the spinoff of that initial series, and it is so much better. It is my favorite thing of all time. Leigh Bardugo is, has um, chronic pain herself. She is a disabled writer, and it just really shows. I love the way Kaz Brecker talks about his disability. I don't think we get to see that type of representation a lot. We don't get to see it a lot where disabled characters are talking to other disabled people and talking about disability in a fantasy setting. And it's just, I love you. Thank you so much for everything. Six of Crows, I truly appreciate your role in my life. So the second book that I want to talk about is actually another duology, and the first book is called The Mermaid, the Witch, and the Sea. It is a um, fantasy story. It is told in a very, like, fairy tale kind of, um, not fairy tale, but in, like, princess, but fairy tale in, like, a folk's tale way. And it's very interesting. I love it. The writing is absolutely beautiful. Um, we get to see more disability rep in book two than we do see in book one. But some of my, just to highlight some of the things that we have in this book is the main couple. It's a sapphic story. It's a sapphic love story is the first book. Um, and it, it talks about and explores the role of colonialism. Um, and it's just truly phenomenal in what it does and it's so sad I will warn you it is it is a sad book uh, but most books that are going to come from me I love sad books I love books that destroy you um and this is definitely one that I had I finished the second book and I, I had to sit down and like step away from reading for a minute because I just needed to think about everything I just read um, book two also has two canonically asexual characters and I that is so exciting to me as an ace person because first off we very rarely get one ace character but second of all we got two ace characters in this story and it like played a role in the story a little bit and I just I was so happy about that and they um they're both perspective characters in like their POV characters in the second book and I strongly recommend it the third book I want to talk about is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This is a singular book um, about a person who just graduated with her PhD and to celebrate goes to Vegas, gets drunk, and marries a random woman. Uh, they really explores a lot of topics around depression and anxiety um, and academics. I will warn you, <laughs> if you are in academics, this book I read in my first semester of my master's and I honestly was kind of mad at my friend uh, for a while because I was just talking about Honey Girl and how it like <laughs> I said I was sorry and it doesn't talk about disability as much the main character is black and it talks about being a black woman in higher education 
um, and trying to fight for a career in the field. And it's just, it's so good. I need to reread it. I probably will read it, reread it before I go back to school this fall. Um, and I, it's, it's great. It's beautiful. 10 out of 10. The fourth book we're going back to series is the Brown Sister series by um, Talia Hibbert. Technically the second book which focuses on Danny Brown who's the middle sister, it's called Take a Hint Danny Brown, um, is the one that has the queer representation. Danny is a queer academic. You can see the theme here. Um, these are romance books. I don't like contemporary romance but these are literally the four contemporary romance books that I will suggest. Take a hint, Danny Brown has um, a plot with fake dating. Uh, it doesn't talk a lot about disability, but the other two books in the series do, um, especially if you read the third book, you can get more context of the first book, anyway, of the first two books. Um, but uh, the first book, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, is about a character with fibromyalgia, um, and book three, The Romantic Interest, has autism. So uh, I just... I love them. Thank you, Talia Hibbert, for all of your hard work. It's another book that is written by a disabled person who talks about disability and knows a disabled fantasy um, and the desire of everything. I I do I just love it. I'm so happy with it. I will reread it a million times over and over. Last fiction book that I want to talk about is called Mooncakes. It's a visual novel by Wendy Walker and Susan Shu. A little bit of mystery. It is a story about a deaf witch and um, their non-binary werewolf love interest. So very fun little visual novel. I'm going to take a second here and I am not sponsored. I wish I was sponsored. I am not sponsored, but I'm going to give you a recommendation. Um, support your local libraries, but also check out the Queer Liberation Library. I am so thankful for this library. If you guys see this, please know I am so thankful for you because it is so rare trying to find, like, trying to find disability books in general is so difficult. Um, and then trying to find books that are about disability and queerness is extra hard and um, the Queer Liberation Library has a whole section on their stuff. It's a completely virtual library. Um, I have it on Libby and um, I think the wait is running about a week to two weeks right now from the updates that I keep getting. It's a fairly small library collection. I'm, I, they're, they're fantastic. They're working so hard. They deserve the world. I'm truly so thankful for them, but they have a section in Libby that is about disability. And that has introduced me to so many books that I hadn't been able to read before. And, um, it has truly just opened my eyes even more into disability stories and seeing disability rep in both fiction and nonfiction has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much. Again, I'm not sponsored. Just check them out because this is the part of a video where normally people are like, here, check this thing out. And this is the sponsorship. This is not a sponsorship, but this is something you really should check out. Four nonfiction recommendations. The first one is the Cancer Journals by Audre Lorde. Crutches and Spice suggested this a long time ago and it took me forever to read it. I finally got it on the library, which made me think about the thing that I just said. Anyway, um, and it it blew my mind. Um, just Audre Lorde is such a beautiful writer and talking about her experience with cancer is truly just so fascinating. But one thing that I really resonated with was when she was talking about cancer treatments in the book and she talks about how like especially when she's talking about breast cancer um feeling a bit of a disconnect with the women who were immediately around her in that health space and it wasn't until she was engaging with other queer women that she felt a part of a community and I feel like that has been a little bit of my own experience with disability of like there is definitely like I I definitely connect with straight women with disability who have chronic health issues um, but there is a different type of kindredness a different type of connection that exists when engaging with other queer disabled people because that intersection of queerness and disability is fascinating and it plays with each other a lot and I've been trying to work on a video to talk about how like those two things interact and I just I am not as eloquent as Audrey Lord. 
So I definitely recommend you check out her book. Truly just great. I also just finished reading, and this is not part of the official um, suggestions, but anything Audre Lorde um, but I just finished a collections of Audre Lorde um, and that was from the Queer Liberation Library and that was also just truly fantastic. I struggle with nonfiction, and I love love those books. So the next two books that I'm going to suggest are by the same author Leah Lakshmi Piapsna Samarasena um, which is Care Work and the Future is Disabled. Care Work is about how disabled people can provide a care for one another. It explores um, especially femme perspectives to care and exploring and supporting femme disabled people and it's just it really opened my eyes to a lot of the conversations that we need to have about supporting one another um, and also, as someone who tends to be hyper-independent, pushed me to ask for more help and to be more open for asking for help from my friends and from those who support me as a form of community. The Future is Disabled is another book that I really have loved reading this year. Um, it really goes into depth a lot about COVID and the role of COVID and the role of disabled people in the future. And there's a lot of hope in that book as much as there's recognition for the tragedies that people with disabilities have experienced, especially in recent years. And I don't think I could form a coherent thought about just truly how much these two books have meant to me and reading them this year and preparing me for going back to grad school. Um, and getting me back into thinking about disability from critical perspectives. Last book that I think every single disabled person should read is Disability Visibility, edited by Alice Wong. It's a collection of essays from um, people with disabilities and talks about their experiences, talks about different perspectives. One of my favorite essays talks about um, disabled ancestors and recognizing disabled people who came before us. And I still remember like being in my bedroom uh, in Texas and I was just going through so much at that time and listening to those essays and really getting to see them because the whole point of the book is not to show like this is what being disabled is like but rather show how each disabled individuals is deeply human and that our experiences creates a community and it just I don't get to see myself a lot represented on the page, um, and I felt so one with the community, even if it was perspectives that I didn't see myself. And I really appreciate the role of this book and what it's done for our community. Finally, there is this honorable mention that I have to mention because I can literally cannot shut up about it to anybody. And technically, I don't know if it's considered disability rep. There is a character who's like perpetually dying. Um, and the first book and that I resonate with a lot and she's also like desired and I also really appreciate that um, and it is called Gideon the Ninth which is about space necromancer lesbians and the plot doesn't make sense I will warn you the plot doesn't make sense until you've read all three books and you go back and reread it like I did recently and now all I want to do is read it again and find these beautiful little treasures everywhere. I have never read a book that has presented especially sapphic relationships in the way that it is presented in this book and maybe I just haven't read enough but there's not any of this like pressure of coming out. It's just so like there's so much happening in those books, um, but being queer is definitely not one that is like a stressor. It is just like complicated relationships with between sapphic women where everyone's kind of like maybe falling in love with each other, kind of, but also like being really weird. And it's just, it is that perfect taste of like sci-fi fantasy thing for me with sapphic representation and I just eat it up every single time and it wouldn't be a book review or not book review book suggestion list if I did not list it. So those are all of my book suggestions. Um, go forth and read and enjoy and remember that audiobooks are just as valid as reading physical copies and that Libby and other resources exist so that you don't have to buy books. You can read for free and Reading has been one of my favorite 
things to do. It is my escape. It is my freedom. And it is words are just my favorite thing in the world. So um, I will leave lists and resources down below that I can think of to make reading more accessible to you. Um, like I said, check out Queer Liberation Library. I love what the work that they're doing. Um, if anything, support your local library, read, go forth and support writers, especially if they have marginalized identities, um, especially when they write about the intersection of those identities and let us enjoy these intersections because those are such beautiful, amazing books that are doing so much and mean so much to me and they can mean so much to so many people, but we have to support authors in order for these books to become more popular and more accessible to the rest of us. So thank you for listening to a episode, I guess, technically of an Issa rambling uh, video, but I love you guys and I will talk to you guys next week. Have a happy pride.